Thank God for that. I'm looking forward to that day when I see Him face to face. And all my sorrows and troubles will be behind me. Amen. Uh, but, you know, we live in this body of flesh and this body is, is full of troubles and sorrows and pains and always something is going on all the time. And I want to just uh, deal with this particular subject this morning. I'd like you to take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to Second Samuel. And Second Samuel chapter, uh, let's see, chapter number 17. Second Samuel chapter number 17. We'll look at just a few scriptures this morning and uh, try to give you this message that's on our heart. Uh, we have uh, just trying to find the mind of God last night and yesterday and just uh, seeking and searching and, and uh, this never would leave us. God just kept sending us back and I came in this morning, early this morning, and uh, God directed my attention back to this passage. So I, I believe this is God's will for... For today, whatever the need is, whoever stands in the need for it, uh, it can surely help us all. The Word of God is profitable. Amen? And I thank God for the profit of the Word of God. So, uh, if you will, I want you to look at one verse. Now, uh, what I'll try to do this morning is, is, is kind of build the, the picture, the illustration, and, uh, and give you the simple message that's on our heart. In, in the second Samuel, I want you to see uh, in chapter 17... 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. Look with me, please, at verse 23. I want to deal with this man by the name of Hithophel. And the Bible says in verse 23, now, I, I, you have to pay very close attention and give your undivided attention uh, to, this, uh, to this message. Let it help your life today. The Bible says in verse 23, And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed. Now I want you to watch this. The Bible says he saddled his ass. And he rose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Now, Father, help us this morning. Have your way. God, I believe that this is the message for the hour. I believe that, Lord, there's a need in our lives this morning to receive this portion of the Word of God. Now, have your way in everything that's said or done. Don't let me say anything, Lord, that would uh, be displeasing to you, God, but only to be a help to the people. And we'll love you for all you do for us, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let me explain, if I could, maybe kind of help you understand. Uh, this is a time during when David is the king of Israel. Uh, David, if you are, everyone understands a little bit about the Bible, knows that, uh, that David was a great king. David was a type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of these days, Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne of David in the Jerusalem, a literal throne in a literal city, and rule and reign this world with a rod of iron. And we know all that. But uh, David is a type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. David has a throne. David's on a kingship, a uh, kingdom here. He has the kingdom and uh, and uh, David's own son, Absalom, decides in his life that he's going to rise up against his father. He was His heart was filled with rebellion. He got uh, indignation toward his father. Uh, he, he decided that he was going to take over the kingdom. And he was going to rule and he was going to be king. And uh, so he, he began to plot it out. He began to go about. His life of taking over and controlling and ruling that throne that his father sat upon. Uh, we can certainly, uh, we don't have time, will not allow us to do so. Uh, but you can go back and read chapter 15. You can see where Absalom stole the hearts of the people. 
Uh, but notice, if you will, please, uh, uh, there came a day also where Absalom actually took over the throne of his father David. Uh, David decided rather than, uh, rather than cause a conflict, rather than hurt my son, rather than see something terrible happen to my boy, I'll just lay my crown aside, I'll lay my robe aside, and I'll leave and I'll go out, and I'll allow him to come in and set up his throne in this place. And so David did. David set everything aside. And David left with 600 Palestinian guards, uh, Philistine guards, that uh, after he slew Goliath, they came over on, on David's side and they protected him. And, and when he left, they went after him. Uh, but Ahithophel was David's counselor. He was, uh, listen, I believe everybody ought to have good counsel. I believe that great men in this world have great counsel. Amen. I believe that, uh, I believe even if the President of the United States, uh, even that job needs good counseling. I believe there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Amen. And so David had this counselor, his name was Ahithophel. Uh, the only problem was when, uh, when Ahithophel, when Absalom took over the throne of David, rather than follow David, rather than go with David, Ahithophel stayed and, and went over to Absalom's side. And uh, that's what I want to, I want you to see something now. Uh, and then what happened to lead up to this verse? I want you to understand uh, that uh, Ahithophel made some gave counsel to Absalom, uh, and uh, and Absalom didn't take it. He just rejected the counsel. In other words, uh, uh, it was a good idea to Absalom, but uh, after hearing other counselors, Absalom decided he wasn't going to. It was all the hand of God. God was sparing the life of David. Ah, uh, the king. Amen. And uh, so, Absalom, I want you to see this. Now, watch this. I, I want you to look with me in a few verses here. Look at verse 23 again. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed. Now, look, they did not, they did not receive his counsel. His counsel was to kill David. His counsel was to separate David from his men. And his counsel was to destroy David. Now watch this. Uh, verse 23. He saddled his ass. Uh, he arose and got him home to his house. Does that look familiar today? I'm going to get in my car and go home. I don't... They didn't like what I had to say. Amen. You ever met anybody like that? I can understand getting mad and leaving because nobody liked what you had to say. But the guy got on his horse and went to his house and set his house in order. And the Bible says he hung himself. I mean, they, don't you think that's carried a little bit too far? I mean, you uh, is it that much to, uh, you'd want to go and hang yourself just because they didn't like your idea? Nobody wanted to do my ideas. I'll hang myself. I mean, isn't that a little bit extreme? Does it seem to you like maybe that that's just a little bit too much? Can I, all in favor of hanging yourself because somebody don't like your idea, raise your hand. I mean, you, you know, that just, uh, you're right, it's kind of humorous, isn't it? This guy went and hanged himself. But he didn't hang himself because they rejected his counsel. Notice, if you will, a few verses here. I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, his testimony. Look at chapter 15 and look at verse number 12. This is the first time you hear about Ahithophel. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor. Amen. Watch this. From, the, from his city, even from Galo, uh, while he offered sacrifices. 
And the conspiracy was strong for the people increased continually with Absalom. I want you to notice that first of all, uh, he had a testimony that he worshipped God. He had a testimony that he was a Christian. He had a testimony that he was saved. He had a testimony that he loved God. He had a testimony. The Bible said they came and got him while he was having sacrifice. Uh, while he was offering his sacrifices to God. He was worshiping God. I mean, he was, he was in that time, in that dispensation, saved by his works. You understand what I'm saying? This man was... Now, this man had a testimony that he sacrificed to his God. Not only that, uh, he spoke for God. He was God's mouthpiece. Look at chapter 16 and look at verse 23. Stay with me. I'm getting somewhere. Then we'll give you the message in just a few minutes. In chapter 16, he spoke for God. Look at verse 23. And the counsel of Ahithophel which he counseled in those days, watch this, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. In other words, both places he spoke in the place of God. So we could say that not only he worshipped God, not only was he saved in that time, not only was he set apart, not only did he give sacrifices to God, but he was God's man. He was God's speaker. He was God's mouthpiece. I, you have to understand this if you're going to get the message today. This man, this man loved God. This man loved the service of God. This man, uh, this man walked with God. This man lived for God. This man gave wise counsel to David. He gave counsel, the Bible said, from the mouth of God for David and for Absalom. Amen. How we understand we are not talking about a lost man. We are not talking about the world. We are not talking... Hey, I'm telling you, this Christian man... He left his home, he, or he left his church, he got mad at church, he went home, he got in his car, he went home, he got to his house, he straightened everything, got his bills right, got his will made out, and he hung himself in his house. Why did he do that? Here's a man that loves God. He had a testimony. He was, he sacrificed. He spoke for God. Not only that, he was a counselor to God's man. We said that, and we showed you that in chapter 15, verse 12. And I want to say, can I say one other thing? He was more than just a counselor. He was a companion to David. Look at Psalms 41, please. Psalms chapter 41 is the psalm that deals with Ahithophel. Psalms chapter 41. I want you to notice, we'll not read it all, but notice what David said, David said about Ahithophel. Verse number 9 says, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted. Watch this. Which did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Amen. David left. David left the throne. David left it for Absalom. Ahithophel stayed with Absalom. He lifted up his heel against David. But then notice, if you will, please, back in chapter 17 and verse 23 of Second Samuel, Notice the tragedy. The Bible says, And when Ahithophel saw the counsel, saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city. 
and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Now, why did he do that? I believe I can show you this morning why he killed himself. And I believe it's the same reason why many Christians today kill themselves. Not only spiritually, but physically. Why? What would drive a man insane? What would make him hate life so much that he'd be willing to put a rope around his neck and hang himself till he's dead? That's got to be awful. That's got to be tragic. Uh, you say, preacher, why did he do that? Was it because they refused his counsel? Was it because they rejected his, his, his counsel? No, it wasn't because they rejected his idea. I want you to look at some other verses real quickly with me, please. Uh, look with me, please, at chapter 23. At 2 Samuel chapter 23. I want you to see this. Uh, hold your finger, hold your place at chapter 23. Turn with me to chapter 17. Hold your place at chapter 17. In chapter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in, uh, in uh, chapter 17 and verse, let's see, let me see if I can find, excuse me, I'm sorry, turn, uh, turn to chapter 23 and, and then, uh, in, uh, let's see what, let me find it here. Hang on just a minute. Uh, David, there it is. And chapter number, uh, 11. I want you to see what's happening here. Actually, actually chapter 10. In, uh, in chapter 23, look with me please at verse 34. Chapter 23, 2 Samuel 23, verse 34. The Bible says, Ahilof, uh, Eliphalet, the son of Ahasbeah, the son of Mechathite, watch this, Eliam, The son of who? Ahithophel, the Gilanite. So, so now listen to me. Eliam is the son of Ahithophel. Look with me at chapter eleven quickly. Back to chapter eleven. Look at verse, look at verse 2. Look at verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him. And all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the eventide that David arose up from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam? Amen. And chapter 23, in verse number 34, says, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that, uh, that Bathsheba, Eliam, was Ahithophel's son. Eliam was the father of Bathsheba. That makes Bathsheba the granddaughter of Ahithophel. Now listen to me. Ahithophel, one day he got a news. He heard that King David had come down there and took his granddaughter. 
and lay with her and took his grandson, Uriah the Hittite, and had him slain in the battle, murdered his grandson, and, and, and then he heard how that uh, David had laid with her and she's going to have a child after Uriah was dead. David was going to take her in and she became the wife of King David. And that day, that moment, that hour when that took place in his granddaughter's life, he began to have a seed of bitterness in his heart. He began to let it grow and he watered that thing and he, and he, and he uh, seasoned that thing and he, and he richened that thing with soil. And, and before you know it, those roots began to spring up and all of his time, all of his life, all of those days, every time he seen King David, he loved God, he lived for God, he worked for God, he counseled for God, but he hated David. He had bitterness in his heart. He couldn't get over it. He couldn't stand the thought that that man, just because he was king, had a right to come in and ruin my family. Now, wait a minute. David did that. He committed adultery. He made a mess. He murdered a man. He, he did all of those things. And you say, but God loved David and still does. David one day was sitting there on his throne. You know the story in uh, chapter 12 or so, where Nathan the preacher came to David and Nathan pointed in his nose and Nathan, after telling the story of how that man came in, the rich man, and stole the poor man's little ewe lamb and David was outraged. David was upset. David said, I'll find him in the kingdom. I'll kill him. Nathan pointed his finger at his nose and said, King, thou art the man. You say, what happened, preacher? David fell on his face. David repented toward God. David had godly sorrow. But Psalm 51 is a story of how David said, God, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I made a mess. I ruined some things in my life. And God loved David. God accepted his uh, apology, his uh, repentance. God accepted that. Uh, he still had trouble in his home. Absalom still rose against him. His brother, uh, his son, raped his own sister. Uh, he carried his baby down to the graveyard and dropped that child in the grave, in an early grave, uh, because of the sins of David. You hear what I'm saying? Now listen to me. I'm going to bring this thing to a head here in just a few minutes. A hit or fail. Could not let it go. Ahithophel was grieved in his soul. Ahithophel became bitter. He was hurt. After that hurt took place, it became hard. His heart was hardened. After his heart was hardened, he never repented. He never got it right with God. You say, preacher, you mean to tell me Ahithophel uh, was at fault? Sure, he was at fault. He should have gave that thing to God. He should have got rid of it. He shouldn't have walked with that bitterness in his life. But he got he got down there. Uh, he got that hardness of heart. Uh, he got then it became hate. He began to hate David. It was bitterness. It was a root of bitterness. I don't know much about gardens. Uh, I'm sure Miss Sue could tell you a lot about plants and different things. But I know there's certain kind of weeds. There's certain kind of plants. If you want to get rid of them things, you can't just cut them off at the ground. Do you realize that, hey, nobody, when's the last time anybody went to the hardware store and bought a pack of weeds to plant? You don't have to buy weeds. You don't have to plant seeds to grow weeds. They spring up by themselves. I'll tell you, you can cut them off. But if you don't dig down that soil, if you don't 
pull those roots out. If you don't get rid of the roots, you'll never get rid of the plant. Here's a man that's rooted and grounded in bitterness. The reason that he went home, the reason that he got mad, the reason that he drove home and set his house in order and hanged himself was because he could not get over it. He couldn't take the bitterness that was in him. It was bitterness that destroyed Ahithophel. Now listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking to church members and people anywhere that wants to listen. I'm telling you, you're going to allow that bitterness. You say it ain't that bad. It's going to get bad. It's going to keep growing. The devil will keep harping on it. The devil will keep fertilizing it. The devil will keep watering it. And before you know it, that bitterness will overtake your life. It will destroy you. You say, hey, they deserve it. But you're not hurting them. You're hurting yourself. You know what bitterness will do? It will cause you to hang yourself. You say, preacher, what can I do with bitterness? Let me give you about four or five things. Don't, don't look so sad. It's not going to take long. I mean, I'm going to hurry up and I'm going to spit them out. Listen carefully. Number one, you can, here's what you can do with bitterness. Number one, you can hang yourself. Can I, can I help you? That will fix the problem. Well, I just don't like them. I'm mad at them. You know what? They probably don't even know it. Why can't you just... You, you say, well, I just, I just can't... I can't stand the thought of even being around them. I just can't... They do something to me I don't like. Well, you know what? Go hang yourself. That's an option. Anybody in here want an option for number one? I mean, well, isn't that stupid? Isn't that senseless? You say, preacher, that's ridiculous. That's exactly what will happen to you. You'll get to the place in your life where life is so miserable you'll wish you were dead. You might be too chicken to pull a rope. Amen. You might be too chicken to pull the trigger, but you'll get the place in your life where you become absolutely useless. You're good for nothing. Amen. Why? Because of bitterness that set up in your heart years ago and you just can't get rid of it. You know what I found out? You know, you know what I learned as a pastor, Brother Rick, in life? I learned that it's about being hurt by people. It's a part of life. You know what else I learned? People cannot hurt you unless you love them. If you don't care for them or care about them, it won't matter to you. But the reason we hold bitterness, the reason we harbor feelings, the reason we can't get over that thing is because we love that person. And so we're torn. We don't know what to do. What can I do, preacher? Well, uh, you can hang yourself. You know what you know what'll happen if you hang yourself? It'll get rid of your bitterness. Did you know that? Or, here's another option. You can get right with God. You say, you say, what about King David? Why don't he did? He got right with God. He had godly sorrow. He repented toward God not to be repented of. He was right with God. David was a man after God's own heart. The person that was sinning was Ahithophel. The person that harbored the bitterness, the person that had the sin in their life was a man that hated someone else after they got right with God. You go on and you keep harboring those feelings. Hey, listen, 
Uh, there's some things that sin does that cuts people away. There's some things that sin will do that separates things. Sometimes it allows things that are irreversible. Sometimes you can't go back and fix what's taken place or what's happened in your life. You just can't fix it. But the truth of the matter is, it's happened. There's nothing you can do about it. You might as well get right with your heart and go with God. That don't mean you have to fellowship with them. That don't mean uh, you have to go have dinner with them. Like I said, sometimes sin does some things you can't fix. It's broke and you can't fix it. But why? You, you, isn't that being broke bad enough? Why allow yourself to be eaten alive with your own bitterness? until you reach the place in your life where you just want to die. Yeah. And you're miserable. We got folks today that's got bitterness in their life with people that's already dead and buried and gone. And you just can't let it go. You say, what I need to do, preacher? Well, one, you can go out and hang yourself. Or, number two, you can get right with God. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins. I didn't say go to God and tell Him what's wrong with King David. I didn't say go to God knows what's wrong with David. God knows what's wrong with that son or that daughter in your home. God knows where they stand with God. God knows what they've been through. But I'll tell you something. Uh, you don't have to tell God about it, amen. You better deal with the sin in your life. What is that? Bitterness. You can go hang yourself. Number two, you can get right with God. If we confess our sins, He's faithful just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then number three, how do you get rid of bitterness? Forgive your fellow servant. Can I ask you a question? You read Ephesians chapter 4. That'll, that'll help you with everything I'm telling you from here on out. Uh, just let, me, let me just ask you a question. Can I help you? Would you just listen to me for a second? Has anybody ever forgiven you? Let's go a step further. Has God ever forgiven you? Have you ever been saved? If you've been saved, it's because it's because God accepted your cry. God has wiped your slate clean. If you ever been forgiven? If you ever been if God's ever taken care of you? Listen, let me help you. Listen to me. It's not because you deserve it. You know what David got? David got a special, a special touch from God called the sure mercies of David. David was singled out besides anybody else, and God forgave him. I believe David, I believe with all my heart, he's washed, he's clean today. I, I am not sure that I can't tell you that Ahithophel is in hell. You say, Why? I'm sick and tired of people in the grace day, in the church age, telling me that if you commit suicide, you're going to go to hell. If you commit suicide and you're saved, you're going to stand before God and explain to Him why come you couldn't trust Him. But you ain't going to hell if you're saved. I said if you're saved. Suicide ain't going to send you to hell. The only thing that sends a man to hell is unbelief. But he wasn't living in the church age. He was living in a day when you had to sacrifice. And it was faith plus works, obedience to God. And he disobeyed God and hung himself. He couldn't get forgiveness for it. I don't know. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just speculating. Maybe he's in hell. Possibility, ain't it?
Number three, you've got to forgive your fellow servant. Why? Because God forgave you. Because you've been forgiven. If you can't forgive them, what you're saying is, I'm better than they are. And I deserve my forgiveness, but they don't. You're a fool. You know what? You, you know what? You need, you need to repent. You need to get right with God. And then, you see, here, listen to me. You know why some people can't forgive others? Because they don't get forgiveness themselves. You know why some people stay mad and harbor feelings with... You know why there's some people right now today mad with the preacher, out with the preacher, uh, uh, hurt with the preacher. You know why? They won't repent themselves. They're guilty. They won't get right with God. And so they use the person they're mad at or, or out with to justify their living wicked. You understand what I'm saying? Why don't you just, hey, it's hard to get right with God. Amen? It's hard, it's hard to ask God to forgive you uh, when you've got something, a crutch that you can lean on. Amen? When you, can, when you can accuse somebody else and blame it on somebody else. Why don't, you just, why don't you just get right with God? And then you can forgive them. You hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you how to get rid of bitterness. You say, we don't have that problem. Hang on, you, you will. And then, not only that, but you need to forsake your hatred and your anger. You've got to forsake it. Also in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27 deals with that. I'm not going to go there, but you can turn and read it. Forgive them. That's... Verse 32, forsake your, your hatred and your anger. How, how is it that you can hate so much and be angry so much? I got, there's folks that's so mad and angry with me and hates me so much. But you know what it does? It allows them to stay in their sin. You hear what I'm saying? Why don't you forsake it? Forsake your sin. Get right with God and then you can forgive the preacher. Or you can forgive your husband. Or you can forgive your wife. Or your children. Or your grandmother. Or Hello! I'm trying to help you. Amen? Forsake, forsake your anger and your hurt. Well, you don't know how much they hurt me. Well, listen. You don't know how much they hurt Christ. Have you, have you strived under blood? Have they put nails in your hands and feet? Have they put thorns on your head? Why is it you can hold something so for years against somebody and you don't even know why? Or maybe you do know why, but it just don't matter anymore. But I'll show them, bless God, I'll be right with God. No, you're, a, you're in sin. You'll never be right with God until you let that thing go in your heart. Well, I've been hurt. Well, get in line. Take a number. Then... Finally, let me say this. How do you get rid of bitterness? You've got you to forsake the anger and the hurt. And then watch this. You've got to forget the past. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. Listen to me. You, you cannot... How in the world can you allow every day of your life to control your life. That's what you're doing. When you won't forget about it and go on. You're allowing, you're allowing those thoughts, those things to rule your life and make for a miserable day. And, and who are you killing? You. I, hey, I don't know how you can... I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're, if you're to the place in your life where you cannot forgive and go on and forget about it, if you've if you got something that's eating at you so much and, and harboring that thing so much and you just can't get rid of it, I doubt if you can get forgiveness from God. Amen. I doubt it. 
How in the world can you do that? Why don't you just let it go? Well, you don't know what they said. Who gives a rip? What difference does it make? I ain't, I ain't going to... Listen. I cannot believe people can get so absorbed in their self that they refuse to accept that others make mistakes. Other, others mess up. Can I, can I help you? Can I tell you something? Let me go ahead and be the first to confess. Brother Ricky, I, I'm just a human being. And I just make mistakes. And I mess up things. Sometimes, you know, I, I seen one day I was watching old Andy. And Andy said, Andy said to Barney, he said, you see that foot. How is it possible that I could get that whole 12 inches in my mouth? I do, I do it all the time. Can I ask you a question? Brother John, answer me honest. Have you ever said something you regretted? You ever said something you regretted saying? You ever went somewhere you, you knew you shouldn't have been there? You, you ever got in an argument when you got through you wished to God you'd have never showed up? Because you shouldn't open your mouth. I mean, you don't know. You know something? You have the power in your words. You have the power. You, you can, you can, people are like balloons. You can take, you can use your words and you can blow them up and swell them up and make them feel like they're light and they're on cloud nine. Or you can use them same words and put a needle in that thing and, and pop them. Bitterness. And them weeds, you just keep whacking them off, whacking them off, so nobody can see it. But it's going to grow back because the roots are still there. Amen? That's enough. Let, let's stand.